Boom shakalaka. What's going on, everybody? Randall here with Crypto Love, and I am joined today by Victor Yi of Data. What is going on, Victor? How you doing? I'm doing really good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. I see you wore the shirt today. Yeah, there. I try my best to fit into you see myself and the logo into. Okay, let's see that. I move back and I'll, I'll have myself and the logo there. Okay. That's perfect. Awesome. So today we are going to talk about data. But before we do that, why don't you fill everyone in? Let us know about yourself. Okay, so I uh, I had engineering background. I studied uh, computer science and math in Tsinghua University, which is a top one university in China. Then I, I did my uh, grad school in Columbia University in New York, as uh, the Ivy League school. Then after that, I spent a few years as a engineer in Silicon Valley. I work on distributed systems uh, from my almost under, whole undergrad to grad school to my, uh, to my uh, career in the Valley. So after, uh, in 2017, I moved back to China and uh, started this uh, blockchain project with my, with my friend and uh, now my, co uh, my, my partner and co-founder, uh, Franklin Song, we co-founded this project data. Great. Wow. So I, I mean, you've been to some pretty good universities, so you got that backing there. That's great. Uh, so how'd you get into blockchain? Uh, so the, uh, the first time I interact with blockchain was uh, like a lot of people in late 2013, which was a time of search of price of Bitcoin. So I, I, I didn't really know what Bitcoin is. So uh, just like other speculators, I try to, uh, I invested something. I bought about uh, 400 coins actually at the price of about um, $400 each at the time. Then the price soared to $1,200. Then it fell back to $600. So I sold almost all of them at that time moment. I thought, okay, I make a good profit. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so looking back, if I kept those coins, I'll be much richer now. So anyway, um, so uh, after that, uh, I didn't re I didn't really, I thought, okay, it was a bubble and uh, I didn't look into the technology. I just thought, okay, it's a bubble and uh, now it burst. So I forget about it. But it was until about 2016, one of my uh, friend, also my college friend, he is uh, one of the early Bitcoin miners. So I know he what has been doing that. So I want to know uh, more about the technology. So I talk with him and we study together, look into the industry. Gradually, I know, okay, it's not, um, I mean, sometimes the price may go up or go down, but it's not something, um, it's not something from, um, it's not something banned or not something now, it's something real and something meaningful. Gradually, I, I get more, more and more into the technology and the industry. So it was, this story was uh, from 2016. And actually, the friend I talk about is one of our major uh, advisors and the scientists uh, of our project. His name is Jia Tian, and he's also in the, our website and uh, our white paper. That's, a, that's my story with uh, blockchain. Awesome. And after that, actually, I get more and more involved. And uh, uh, in last year, 2017, and my old friend, Franklin Song, he reached out to me. And, I and actually, he did start, he studied in blockchain in Yale uh, University before. So he had also very good background in this area. And uh, we put more effort into it and started, and started this project. Great. Yeah, I mean, blockchain, the more research you do about it, the more it seems like it's just going to change the world and be the future. Uh, the more you understand it, the, you, uh, the more you trust it. That's my yeah. feeling. Yeah. Great. So uh, tell us about data. Okay. So uh, data actually is a, uh, is a blockchain uh, infrastructure and the protocol built for the uh, data ecosystem. Or originally, we... Uh, we use the name data as a short for decentralized AI powered trust alliance. Actually, there are three factors uh, accounted into this uh, phrase. 
decentralized is for uh, meaning the blockchain technology and actually more than blockchain technology because they are, we have more technology, more decentralized technology other than blockchain and AI powered, that means a lot, another part of our technology, which is uh, AI modeling. And the trust alliance is uh, one of our uh, major application scenario, which is to the anti anti fraud or data fraud uh, um, scenario. So actually, the word, uh, the whole word, phrase is uh, contains multiple um, uh, concepts. There, there, there's blockchain, there's decentralization, there's AI modeling, and there's data um, authentication. So in the, all around, we see our project as a, a backbone or infrastructure for the um, decentralized data ecosystem. Yeah. So tell us a bit about ad fraud, because this is something I wasn't too familiar with. Okay. So actually, um, because actually my partner, he worked in the uh, digital ad uh, uh, industry for a few years, quite a few years. So. Uh, and I did, I work on the ads uh, department when I work in Silicon Valley companies like LinkedIn and Twitter. So we are very familiar with that. So basically, in short, um, uh, ad fraud is a huge problem in, uh, in the internet industry. Uh, almost 40% of online traffic are fake traffic. Uh, those traffic are created by the click funds, bot users. Those kind of uh, fake actions, but the advertisers they are paying for those fake actions, and uh, uh, in this way, the real, uh, the legitimate uh, tra um, publishers, they got hurt for someone else's uh, malicious behaviors. Uh, the advertisers got hurt because they pay for like they pay for the bad traffic. And the whole industry got hurt by uh, into this um, malicious loop. And that's and uh, that's the overview of the data fraud in the ads ecosystem. And uh, um, there are other major data fraud scenarios. Another one is online and finance because um, in a lot, a lot of online lending cases, almost. Um, near 10% or even more um, lending applic uh, online financing applications are um, fraud action, fraud applications. The borrowers, they intend not to pay it back. So that almost 10% fraud leads to um, almost 90% of the revenue for the online uh, financial providers. And, some, and that's almost, um, um, that's almost a uh, bottleneck for the online uh, financing um, industry. Uh, as long as they can reduce the fraud rate by 1%, they can make more than maybe 50% uh, revenue. Uh, I mean, profit in this case. So I learned two major cases of uh, data fraud. One is online advertisement. The other is uh, the online financing. Um, those cases, those scenarios are real major um, um, cases where data fraud is uh, is happening. Yeah. So how does it, how does data plan to uh, fix this problem? Um, we plan to fix this problem by introducing something called the reputation score to each device. Basically, this reputation score is like a credit score in uh, in the offline world. The credit score you get it by, I mean, the credit score uh, bureaus and companies, um, like uh, trans, uh, like those um, TransUnion, they collect data from your uh, banking activities, and and to and read, um, read one at uh, one client. Uh, we collect data from your online and um, online activities, including especially though your activities involving watching and uh, interacting with ads. In this, by after clicking the data, we run the AI modeling to model the user behavior to see if it's a legitimate user or a fake user. And then we assign uh, each 
some reputation score to each device. Now this score can be used by for the um, uh, used by the uh, other providers and the finance uh, the uh, non providers to see uh, to um, to uh, to draw a profile of the user to decide if it is a real user or fake user. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And does that information stay on the blockchain? Um, that's a good question. Yes, the, uh, the raw data is uh, stored off-chain to the blockchain. The uh, post-processed data, the reputation score, stays on the blockchain. We, in this way, you know, blockchain has some features like non-changeable, something not centrally controlled. No, uh, those features enables, uh, enables that, uh, that score system to be legitimate to be trusted by every, everyone. Okay, yeah, so you have four layers built into your system. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can we go through each of those layers? Because I think it's uh, important for people to know the, the difference between them. So I yeah. guess we could start with mobile storage and work our way through. Yeah, actually I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather say uh, start from the SDK layer. Do you Perfect, you're the expert, so we'll go with that. <laughs> okay, so, uh, we have a goal to, as we talked uh, previously, we have the goal to uh, to build a reputation score for each device based on their um, based on their online activities. So uh, there's few there are few things we need to do. First is we want to collect the online activities. Second is we want to store some data um, about these activities. Third is we want to run the modeling. The fourth is we want to store it on the blockchain. So the first uh, step, we want to collect data from, and then that's a SDK layer. Um, we run a company uh, which is called Umob uh, before we started this project. Umob is a SDK provider to the uh, APP developers. So um, we, Umob will be the first collaborator of data project. Um, um, uh, by uh, by uh, injecting data's SDK into UMOB's SDK, so and the data's SDK will be used by other developers too. Um, this SDK will um, handle a few things. One is measuring user activity. Second is collecting some uh, necessary data to model user uh, behavior. The third is try to assign uh, is to assign. Um, um, reward to users based on their contribution. So that's the um, that's the SDK layer. After it, the SDK layer collects the data, it needs to be stored somewhere. It cannot be stored on the blockchain because blockchain is not designed for store uh, arbitrary data. It's designed to store transaction data, but not for other data types. So we want a decentralized uh, storage system, something like IPFS, but uh, now it's, in our case, we design it just for the mobile use cases. So it's, uh, it's like a mobile-centric, uh, lightweighted IPFS to store the user activity data. So that's a P2P mobile storage layer, which we call it, actually we call it M cube. It's short for mobile metadata management system. So that's the storage layer. After the storage layer, uh, we, want, we run the offline uh, AI um, layer. So the AI application layer um, runs offline uh, reputation modeling to rate each um, device based on the activity, assign uh, an activity score to each device. After that, um, it stores the data, that part of re um, reputation data onto the blockchain. So that's a blockchain layer um, we are managing. So that's a four layers. So basically it's a flow of data. The data flows from the, um, the data flows from the user device onto the storage system, onto the offline uh, modeling. AI modeling system, then into the, onto the blockchain system. That's that's uh, the fourth 
uh, four steps of the user data flow. Great. So I saw that you're going to be using state channels in your system. Is that for is that for scalability and speed? You see that actually that's part of the uh, blockchain uh, blockchain layer because we build um, our system, uh, build our blockchain, and and there's token and coins of this chain. So we want it to have use real usage scenarios to be some real utility token. Um, as long as we want it to be used, uh, the performance needs to support that. We started a multiple uh, existing, um, I mean, um, uh, technologies to scale uh, blockchain. There's sharding technology, there's state channel technology, there's some uh, technology that favors centralization, like those uh, super loads election by US, those kind of technologies. And we concluded that the state channels may be the shorter, most um, for now, I mean, we concluded that state channels may be the um, uh, most favorable technology for us to choose. So that's the one we designed and decided to incorporate into our uh, blockchain design to make it really support uh, micropayments. Mm -hmm. And how does the how are how does the token work on the ecosystem? What are the tokenomics? Yeah. So, uh, so you see, the first step we want to collect data from user uh, based on user behavior. Uh, we need to encourage the application developers to apply our SDK to their application. So we want to reward them. We reward them by issuing new tokens to the user and the developers. Like in a mining like uh, in a mining like uh, way. So basically, we call it proof of attention mining uh, mechanism. So 90% uh, of new tokens, uh, newly minted or mined tokens, will go to end users and the um, application developers, among which actually the end user gets 70% because they are true contributors. They are true owner, owners of the data. So uh, to uh, once they get incentivized, they will be willing to uh, work or cooperate with the ecosystem to contribute um, by um, contributing their data time, their attention, their data, and the app developers contribute by, uh, by incorporating the SDK. In this way, um, um, that's how the new tokens are issued and how we want, we want to bootstrap and incentivize uh, the use. And after that, that's how tokens are from. And uh, we are working with multiple developers uh, to, in, um, to incentivize that they to accept the tokens in their uh, apps um, for micropayments, for buying, for making in-app purchase. So that's where the tokens are used. So that's the um, that's the token the the token economics you talk about. Okay, and I saw you built your blockchain off of Ethermint. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. 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 Was there a reason for uh, choosing that one? Actually, um, first we don't want to rebuild the wheels. We don't want to build a blockchain system from zero from scratch. There are a lot of good existing ones. We want to. Uh, choose a good one to start with. And uh, we wanted to have multiple features uh, like smart contracts so that we uh, developers can develop apps on the system. So we started um, from the uh, Ethereum uh, family of blockchain technologies. And uh, we wanted to be highly, um, be more scalable than Ethereum. Ethereum is not a scale, and it is evolving itself. So we um, we look into some this Ethereum system, which is a Ethereum um, implementation on the Tendermint uh, consensus engine, and it has much higher um, um, performance and throughput because um, it's based on the um, uh, PDFT. Uh, consensus mechanism instead of the POW, 
um, consensus mechanism. So, um, and we want something that uh, supports uh, secondary development easily. And we see this system is a good system to start with. It, uh, it's um, uh, code-wise, it's highly modulized and uh, uh, has a very good documentation, very good development community. So we want, we decide to um, build our blockchain on top of the existing system. Uh, and, and that's why we choose this one to start with. Okay, yeah, sounds like you guys put a lot of thought into that instead of just picking one out of the thin We did a lot of study <laughs> on existing <laughs> projects over there. Yeah. Very good. Um, so in terms of dealing with advertising, on the blockchain. There are a few different competitors that you have and you guys go into depth with it in the white paper, but I'm yeah. guessing it might be like one person watching who hasn't read the white paper. So uh, okay. can you go into how you compare with other projects like basic attention token or ad exchange or any of them? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a really nice question. Uh, in one word, we see our project as a, an a all around solution and infrastructure for the whole data ecosystem. Not only the ads, ads is a major part of the data ecosystem, but, uh, but not the whole of it. I just named the financial industry too, which is another major part of the data ecosystem. So we see our, uh, once again, we see our system, our project, uh, all around, uh, whole, um, all around um, infrastructure to the, um, data ecosystem. So um, to explain, if we compare with basic attention token, it handles attention rewarding, but nothing more than that. Um, it handles basic attention rewarding in its own platform, but not um, other applications and other um, websites outside its platform. So it's more like a utility token. In, um, in a single, uh, within an app, instead of uh, infrastructure for all the apps, that's the basic attention token. Uh, comparing with Addict, uh, Addict, 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 ADX, which is a solution to um, blockchain-based app exchange. So we see that as an application, not an infrastructure. So they can, actually they can migrate to our system after, after ours is ready because it's a smart contract based um, um, from a system. So uh, migration is easy. So there are other, um, there are other uh, blockchain based uh, advertising projects. And there are another one which handles uh, data fraud by try to build a online uh, whitelist of um, people uh, making votes to uh, determine the um, determine the uh, entities in the whitelist, but that's not a, a comprehensive solution because it's subject to the civil attack uh, we frequently consider in in the blockchain area, and it's not it's the voting is subject to fraud itself, and that's hard to manage because voting itself is something, something off-chain, and the data off-chain cannot be verified easily. So uh, to summarize, I see other competitors in this area, but they just handle some of the questions, but not all of them. They, uh, they don't really build an infrastructure, but we do. That's how I compare ours with other competitors there. Yeah, it definitely seems like you guys have the most com complete solution for dealing with advertisements um, out there compared with all the other projects. Uh, to be honest, uh, we study a lot. We study everything out there to come up with what we should do, actually. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. So um, you mentioned the YoMob partnership. Can you talk a bit more about that? Uh, so, um, my partner, Franklin Song, he uh, started this YoMob actually a few years ago. Um, so, um, when he was working at a lot of companies, YoMob was a branch 
of a lot of uh, online gaming company. And after that, you must spin off from the online gaming company to be a standalone service provider to application developers. And in this whole process, they gain a lot of experience in the online digital ads and the data ecosystem uh, experience. Then um, we co-founded this data project and the UMOB naturally become a partner of this data, uh, blockchain data foundation. And, um, and as a first step of collaboration, uh, UMOB will inject our SDK, uh, data's SDK into, into its SDK. In this way, data will get exposed to uh, more than 2,000 developers and get exposed to more than 100 million end users, monthly end users there. That's how data project can get um, bootstrapped because uh, how, however good te technology you develop, you need to have early adopters. Unimob will be the first adopter of data and we are working with other partners. One of them is Coachella, which is a, a European and American uh, an online advertising company. Another is called Blue Focus, which is the largest uh, online uh, media company in China. So data is collaborating with other uh, major players in the digital ecosystem too, but Umob is the first one. Yeah, and 100 million end users is pretty massive adoption. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually we have good goal to, you know, to develop good tools and uh, scenarios to actually to uh, get those, most of the non-commerce, no commerce exposed to the cryptocurrencies to transform them into commerce actually. We have the, uh, we have the resource and we have the right way to do that. Awesome. Awesome. So I guess, um, where are you guys on your roadmap and what do you have upcoming? Actually, we are doing really good on our roadmap. Uh, we have four layers. So our development is, um, is, uh, in, uh, is working in these four directions too. Uh, for the SDK layer, actually, we have already tested, te uh, we have already done uh, working on the private test of the pro uh, data's prototype. There's a major uh, game uh, in Asia called Zap Zombie. You can see that and uh, you can see that in our press release that uh, um, the users of this game, Zap Zombie, has already tested, started to test with our uh, SDK. They will get uh, rewarding points uh, after they view the ads view and interact with the ads actually. So, um, and they will be able to consume those points and tokens in the app. So in this way, we have the whole around token circulation, um, token circulation uh, scenario. That's SDK layer part. Uh, storage layer part, uh, we have finished our first stage of development. Um, so uh, just, just last week actually, so the, uh, the early version of uh, the mobile main, uh, story system is out there. Um, the blockchain layer part, uh, we are making good pro progress too. We have built our um, internal test net and we have making uh, progress on, um, on the development. Uh, we plan to open source our code and uh, uh, release the testlet in the third quarter, and we are hitting that target. And the AI modeling part is making great progress too. Actually, we are we have formed a collaboration with uh, this company I just named Blue Focus. We formed a laboratory of online digital, um, online uh, blockchain technology in the uh, in the online digital. Um, publications uh, industry. So uh, we collaborate uh, on building the AI modeling, anti-fraud data modeling in this laboratory, and it's in really good progress. So in short, actually, we are making good pro progress on, on the four layers of development, and uh, actually, we are 
not only hitting the ta target, but uh, going ahead of the timelines. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're making a lot of progress more than just a white paper like a lot of projects out there. You're actually doing stuff. We are doing really real stuff and doing real development there. We have a team of more than 10 developers. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the team? Okay. Okay. So um, we have two major co-founders, uh, me and uh, Franklin. Um, we have a CTO with uh, his name is uh, uh, ZND, and uh, he was a chief data scientist. I mean, ch I mean, chief, not the top one, but a major principal data scientist uh, from Microsoft. Before Microsoft, he had a PhD uh, in major U.S. university, and uh, he uh, worked for uh, MicroStrategy and uh, Capital One as data scientist. So he had a very solid data scientist and engineering background. And we have a team of um, in our blockchain and uh, um, in our blockchain, the story system team, we have people from uh, major top universities and the top uh, academic background, including Berkeley, including Stanford, including Tsinghua University in China. Those are all major great universities. And uh, um, in our AI modeling part, uh, I mentioned to you, we have a collaboration with this Blue Focus. So um, two of um, our two teams, we contribute uh, researchers and developers in our collaborative laboratory to work on it. So that's how the team is composed of. It's it's a very um, diversified. It's some somewhat distribute decentralized. We have team members in uh, Silicon Valley. We have team members in Europe. We have members in Singapore and uh, some a lot of members in China too. So and we all have a very good um, academic and uh, professional background. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like you've got some all stars on the team. So that's good. Definitely helping you keep up with the uh, developments. Thanks, yeah. Cool, so I've made it through my questions. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Okay, uh, let me see. Um, what I really want to talk about is, actually a lot of people ask us uh, throughout the process, they ask us, why don't you build a lot of public chain? Why don't you build a, a lot of system like EOS or Zilliqa? or a lot of out there like IOST, if you um, pay attention to that. And there are tons of it, tons of it, a lot, a lot of public chains, uh, like Radar Network, Thunder, Cypherian, uh, Quark Chain, and like uh, Atomic Chain. chain, chain all of them. Basically like for almost a basic element, basic particle, there's a chain named after it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's quantum chain, so there's, <laughs> after that, there's a neuron chain, so <laughs> a quark mm -hmm. chain, those kind of things. So um, we, want, we want to say there's a ten, there are tens of pub, public chain out there. Um, but first, they are just, too, a lot of them just too similar in technology. They just claim, a lot of them claim to be able to scale the blockchain technology. But in the end, the most adopted blockchain in the world now is the least scalable blockchain, which is Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. So um, they try to scale by sacrificing decentralization, which is not real innovation. It's not. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the other part is because blockchain, the value of blockchain, the cryptocurrency is based on consensus. We don't really have many and um, the world cannot have consensus on a lot, a lot of different public chains. They will end up have consensus in a few of them, but not all of them. Technology is not the only thing. To speak honestly, I think t Bitcoin is a little bit obsolete in technology. It's not the modern one. It's not the fastest one. There are a lot of blockchains has better technology than Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is still the dominating one because it has a consent. People agree, co have consensus on its value. That's not something. Um, so you can easily build a public chain 
by by tuning some of parameters, by sacrificing some of the um, uh, decentralization, you can have higher TPS, but you cannot claim you are going to be successful because it's just there's just too many of it. So we want to build a blockchain system that has real application scenario that can really uh, work out, can really uh, affect a lot of people. So that's why we uh, decide to focus on some vertical, on the data ecosystem vertical, and we want to provide a all around solution. For example, to be um, to to explain actually, um, currently a lot of DApps they are limited by um, not able to access to many data. Um, so we the industry needs some decentralized data storage system. They need IPFS, but not only IPFS. Um, we, they, they need some lightweighted, mobile tailored uh, storage system. That's our one. So we, we build it as part of our system. And that part can be used by other people in, uh, in the industry too. In this way, developers can develop much more advanced um, D apps with the storage system. Um, with they can have much much more features than current uh, D apps on Ethereum. So um, that's why we that's why how we why we come up with the project design as it, as now we have. Uh, we want to focus on some uh, some real and the significant uh, scenario. We want to be, uh, build. Um, we want to build a all-around technology solution. Not the not only the, the chain itself, but also the storage part to enable uh, its usage. Uh, we want to um, we want to um, target a real problem in the world, which is data fraud. We want to handle it along with our infrastructure which we did. So we want to be able to, uh, we want to be able to bootstrap the system. That's why we collaborate with Lumo and the other companies in, uh, in the industry. So um, it's, almost, uh, it's almost like a highlight of our technology, but they are not just there because we design the technology there, not just because they sound fancy, we design there because they, we need those technologies, and we know that um, they are um, they are an entity. They are uh, um, they are they are they are assist all around system um, to make things work together. So that's that's what I want want to talk with you. Uh, so we see our project. Uh, a very really solid project comparing with a lot of high scalability, high scalability blockchain. A lot, as you see, a lot of a lot of uh, projects uh, brands in themselves like that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, definitely. So you're actually a real life use case instead of just competing with the other high TPS yeah. blockchains. Perfect. See that. Yeah. yeah. So if people want to find out more about data, where can they go to find out more? Yeah. Uh, they can go to our website, mm -hmm. uh, which is data.eco. So eco is ECO. So I think that's a good name. We pay a good money for that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have our links to uh, our social, major social me uh, media reaches. Um, they are our Telegram. Uh, we have um, we have our Reddit pages. Uh, we have our Medium pages. You can where you can uh, comment on our, on our articles. And uh, we have Telegram groups for major languages in the world, uh, not only English, but also Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Spanish, uh, Russian, uh, and that's also expanding. So um, we have uh, we have a Twitter uh, account which has more than seventy thousand followers, and they are very active. So we have a social reach, um, almost major. Uh, global social media. Oh, by the way, we have Facebook pages too. Uh, and for some local, um, like Korea and China, 
we have a uh, social media for, uh, tailor for their uh, local um, social apps. Like for China, we have WeChat groups and WeChat pages. For Korean, we have a uh, Kakao uh, groups and Kakao pages. So um, uh, those are all the area places uh, our users can reach out to us. Awesome, perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Victor. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you, thank you. And it's well, good, really good to speak with you, actually. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, have a good one. Peace. You too. Have a really good one.